As many of you know, I am not a fan whatsoever of the United Nations. In fact, I always call them the useless nations. That's because that's exactly what I see the, uh, them as. When they actually try and, when they're actually trying to, whoa, <laughs> okay, bubs. Yeah, like I said, dog getting in the way. Hold on, bubs. There you go. Not right now. So anyway, they're pretty useless in when they try and stretch their authority to something that matters. And I mean, I've brought up the examples of Rwanda, how it was an absolute failure, Rwanda was, that they let the genocide go on. They refused in General Assembly to actually say it was a genocide. They refused to give the proper um, rules of engagement to the peacekeepers that were in the area, which put them at risk. In fact, that led to the death of 10 Belgium peacekeepers because when they were under fire, I can't remember if it was by the rebels or whether by government forces, but they weren't sure if they were even allowed to engage, if they weren't even allowed to defend themselves. So they surrendered, and each one was executed. So this is the problem. They're useless when they try and uh, throw their weight around, but where it doesn't matter, where they're just trying to infringe on the sovereignty of a nation, well, they're fucking effective at that, so I have no respect for them. I have no respect for the United Nations, and if I, I had a say in it, pull out of the UN. Fuck the UN. Now, the reason I bring this up is because just yesterday, we found out that 10 UN peacekeepers were killed after armed assailants attacked in northern Mali. And the Mali mission is something that uh, I did. I think it was episode 75 I came out, where I say it was called uh, a useless mission for the useless nations. And that was because I found that the, when I looked into it, the situation of Mali is too far gone the situation of Mali is not a peacekeeping mission, it's a fucking war zone. And that's all it really is. But in, now we're putting our troops into harm's way because we, I think it was the end of June, just before Canada Day of 2018, is when we brought in about 250 Canadian soldiers in order to go into Mali and continue the peacekeeping mission. And this was all because Justin Trudeau wanted his seat back on the United Nations Security Council. That's really what it's all about. Both Mulcair and Trudeau criticized Harper for losing that seat in the UN when it was the 2015 election. So we're putting our soldiers in harm's way for one of the most deadliest mission when it comes to uh, when it comes to peacekeeping missions. And this is even on if we look here, this is the MINUSMA fact sheet, the United Nations Multidimensional Integrated Stabilization Mission in Mali. And if we go down, we can see there's about 15,000. Uh, total personnel that are in, involved, but really what we want to look at is fatalities. Right here, there have been 177 peacekeepers that have been killed since the mission in Mali started back in 2013. That's a shit ton of numbers, and it's been nothing has changed. It's still a failed society. It's still a failed uh, a failed state. It's in the process of a civil war, but we're trying to act like it's just some um, social friction. It's just people aren't getting along. There's a bit of violence out there when this is not the case. It's not the case. It's a war zone, and we're putting not only our troops, but the troops of other nations in danger for a mission that's not going to succeed. The situation has not gotten any better. It's not going to get any better while we're there. Now, the thing is, is when it came to this story here, I heard about it online, and whoever I, I heard it from actually made a mistake and said it was 10 Canadian peacekeepers who had been killed. This is not the case. The peacekeepers who ended up getting killed were from Chad. So that made me feel, you know, a little better sort of thing. I don't want Canadians to be killed over here. And right now, the, what our forces are doing is they're, fly, they're flying medical evacuations, actually. So it's not like we have infantry on the ground, but their job is whenever an attack happens, they're to evacuate any injured to medical facilities. So, And they're using the Chinook helicopters in order to do so. But yeah, the, like, for, so at first it was unclear whether this was actually Canadian peacekeepers who were killed. And one of the reasons is because our defense minister, Harjit Sejan, when he fir first was uh, asked about this, he didn't end up saying what was the status of our Canadian troops. It's possible he didn't know at the time, but this left a lot of Canadians hanging, like, what the hell's going on with our troops? Um, and they were end up saying that this ended up uh, all the peacekeepers were killed in the assault in the uh, assault on their camp in Agokhok uh, were from Chad, 
And a Gokhawk, we can see. Where is it? There we go. So here's Molly here. And so what I have is, you'll notice that a little south, I've got the actual point here. And then just a little north of that, there's the red star. Now, the little the point on the from Google Maps, that's showing where the Canadian forces are based. They're based in Gaio, Gaio, I think it's called. And then up here is where that attack ended up taking place because most of the violence is taking place in northern and central Mali. The south seems to be more or less right now unaffected. But it's not that far away, really. It really isn't. So this just... It makes me nervous for our men and women in uniform over there who are doing their jobs all because Justin Trudeau wants to virtue signal on the world stage. This is the whole point of what we're seeing right now. So I've stated before, it's a useless mission for the useless nations. Uh, now, and this has been more or less confirmed, the situation is not any better uh, this is from some of the leaders involved in Mali, from our Canadian forces leaders. We got midway, from my politics, midway through Canada's involvement, security in Mali worsens. And this is from January 15th, 2019. So this is just before the attack ended up taking place. Uh, the outgoing commander of Canada's military detachment in Mali says the security situation has not improved during Canada's peacekeeping mission, mission in the West African country. And uh, this is Colonel Chris McKenna, and I don't think he has any relations to our environmental minister, Catherine McKenna. Or at least I just did a brief Google search, and I didn't see any relation to them. In the last three or four months, there had been an uptick in community-on-community -community violence across Mali, and specifically in central Mali. Uh, and it says the number of targeted assassinations of civilian armed groups has increased since September, according to December 28th uh, report by the United Nations on, a, uh, on its peacekeeping mission there. And what they're making reference to is this right here is uh, this Security Council report that ended up coming here out. Uh, report from Secretary General, sorry. Anyway. And it even states down here where it says there have been an increase in incidents of intimidation kidnapping and target assassinations of both civilians and signatory armed group members especially in the center of the country additionally there was mounting intercommunity violence and clashes in central mali so all this is is what i've already talked said before it is a useless mission it is a civil war and we're not stopping anything by being there there is nothing that canada can do or any other nations there can do to prevent this violence from doing it which we're kind of at the point that we just got to let it it play itself out 